I'm Bob Harris of Decorative Concrete Institute. Welcome to Duramen's training and educational series for industrial and decorative flooring systems. Products. Oftentimes, clients will ask the question, is it acceptable to put a cement-based topping or overlay over vinyl tile? I'm a bit old school in my approach to that uh, question in the sense that I like to remove the vinyl tile if possible uh, and grind the mastic down to sound concrete, establishing a profile I know in terms of adhesion and longevity, that's the best way. However, having said that, that's not always an option. So there's a couple considerations if you're going to consider going over a vinyl tile like we have here. Also, um, some, in some instances, you can't remove asbestos vinyl tile, for example. And typically, an asbestos vinyl tile is nine inch by nine inch, where this is a, a one foot by one foot square. So there are certain environments where you simply can't uh, remove it. You would have to abate the asbestos, asbestos. So that is a good example of going over vinyl tile. What we like to do, uh, if you're making this a consideration, is we like to scuff up. Certainly, if there's any wax on the floor, you would need to use a wax stripper and get the wax off. Um, and in addition to that, we like to sand the floor. So we'll go over this with a sanding screen, or in this case, we have a 36 grit sandpaper. And what you'll do is you'll see a slight profile. So um, what we want to try to obtain is deglossing the tile. So when you take away the gloss, there's a much better chance for this product to adhere. Uh, so that's one consideration. Also, too, you'll notice in this corner, you have some seams in which we'll go through after we've prepped the vinyl. We'll go ahead and skim coat the seams prior to putting our, our final flooring system down. If not, you'll get telegraphing or ghosting in your finished uh, flooring system. So another consideration is, is the vinyl actually adhering. And so there are certain pull tests that you can do, and there are certain specifications. Get with Duramen, and uh, they can provide you with that information if necessary. But obviously, the tile needs to be in direct contact with the concrete. You can't have any loose or delaminating tile. That would need to be repaired. So we'll start off with sanding. So. From here, I can see the light where I'm still shining here, but I've lost the gloss over here. So that, and plus I can just lightly see a scratch profile. So that's going to um, be a much better surface to go over with your cement-based topping as opposed to just going over untreated vinyl. Once the sanding is complete, we'll vacuum up any residual and we'll damp mop it and let the surface dry. Just prior to uh, putting our cement-based topping down, we're also going to prime the surface with um, a product that's called CP1000. And in addition to that, and this is especially crucial for um, asbestos vinyl tile, while the CP1000 uh, primer is still wet, we're gonna broadcast cementitious powder into that. And what that does is it provides uh, adhesion for your final coat or your final finished flooring. Okay, we've prepped our vinyl tile. Uh, we've, we've made certain that everything is uh, adhering properly, which it is. You saw us using a 36 grit sandpaper um, to degloss the surface, and then we've taken a damp mop. It would be acceptable to, acceptable to auto scrub. The, the key is to get any particulate off the floor and make sure it's clean. So not a bad idea too. Um, having said that, oftentimes when we're out on a project, we'll go ahead and put slip on booties. We don't wanna take uh, particulate from the bottom of our boots and walk right across the surface. So just keep the surface as clean as possible. What we're doing now, uh, our next step is we're using Scrafino basically to fill the gaps that we had talked about earlier. Um, this mixes with CP1000 and you're just getting um, a consistent mix basically. And this is only to just go in where there's a gap on the seams and put it nice and thin on the widest of the seams here. It's not mandatory to do all, every single seam, basically just where, it's, where there's a separation between the tiles. A little bit right here. Once this material is uh, completely dried, I'll just go back over it 
and just give it a light scrape like so just to take any residual so we don't have a, uh, a seam there. And then we're ready for our next step, which is the application of the CP1000 CP primer and the broadcast of the uh, cementitious powder uh, preparing for our overlay installation. On our vinyl tile panel, we're preparing this for the installation of Param SSL, which stands for Semi Self Leveling. To recap what we did is we started off by uh, deglossing the vinyl tile by using 36 grit sandpaper on a swing buffing machine. It created a slight profile. We cleaned the surface and then if you recall what we did is we skim coated with Scrafino the wider gaps. As an option, sometimes for insurance purposes it's not a bad idea to just run a tight coat of Scrafino over everything and what you do by what what happens by doing that is you reduce the likelihood of getting a uh, ghosting of the vinyl tile through your finished floor so if there's any concern at all go ahead and just run a tight coat of Scrafino over everything and once that's dry um, the next the next step would be to put CP1000 down as a prime coat prior to doing that I like to just lightly scrape uh, the surface keep in mind we're putting a like you can see right here this would show through your finished floor so you want to get any any high spots off of the uh, concrete um, like you see here just any of the ridges just to get off high spots uh, vacuum that and then you're ready for for your uh, CP1000 on the Param SSL panel here over vinyl tile we're uh, advancing to our next step, which is to apply CP1000. Read the literature and you'll find that uh, they want two coats. The first coat is applied and you want a minimum of eight to 10 hours dry time virtually the next day. And then you come back and you missed on a second coat. Um, and once that's just tack free, you're ready to go with the Pram SSL. So the priming is a very crucial aspect of this, number one for adhesion. But with this system that we're using, it's referred to as a um, semi-self-leveling, we want to have the ability to go back out and second trowel it. And by priming it twice, a double prime, it uh, enables you more time. The, the liquid, the CP1000 that's mixed into the SSL, doesn't absorb real fast. So we want, we want plenty of time to be able to uh, second trowel. Now again, this is a small panel. On a larger application, you could put it in a pump-up sprayer and you could spray it down. Um, for efficiency, but it is always a good idea to go ahead and back roll. You just don't want big puddles if you're spraying it down. Here, um, it's not going to absorb as much directly over the vinyl tile because it's a sealed surface. On a concrete surface using CP1000, you definitely want to put a, a good amount down per the uh, recommendations, the tech data, and, and then uh, back roll out any puddles. And then you would, uh, again, second prime it. 